Welcome back to Software Inc, everybody. I hope you're having a good one because I am excited to be back. It's a little bit bittersweet. I've got to be honest, we are so close to the end with Nerdresoft. We have done almost everything there is to do, but there is still some work to be done. Now, I'll be completely honest, I wasn't really planning on the last episode being an hour and a half long, but these things sometimes happen. I did say the episode would be a little bit longer, but well, apparently it was about 45 minutes longer than average. But uh, these things, again, they happen from time to time. If you didn't watch that episode because it was so long, here's a really quick recap of what we did so that you're up to speed. Most of the episode was spent building this thing, which is our newest building. It's not quite finished and it's a little bit bland on the outside. It's not my best work yet, but on the inside, it also has absolutely nothing on the top floor and the middle floor, but the bottom floor, I love, I love, love, love this space. I love how it turned out and it houses two new game dev teams we have games two and we have games three and these guys at the moment are working on dream world when it comes to games two and then good old games three is working on mississippi john our version of indiana jones yes that really is why it's named that and i love it we're also working on updating a bunch of things we are updating doors amplitude studio 2 vertex studio 3 we're updating doors to Inbox One and Defender, as well as porting a bunch of things to a bunch of things. We are working a lot. We are putting our updates team to the test. And what was interesting about that is apparently at one point I missed the leader of the updates night shift retiring because the updates night shift, when I went in and checked just before I hit the record button, had eight people. There were eight people working on the updates night shift so long story short i've given them a new leader they have got all their staff back but i'm kind of thinking we need a bigger updates team so what i'm thinking we do is maybe build out this floor and turn it into another game dev space kind of like the one downstairs but then this floor up here could very well be for another update team or a couple of update teams i actually think that would be a pretty good idea because we really do need to update everything much much faster because we have a lot of automation going on we have six automation projects we have two games that we're working on manually we have n phone 4 which we're working on manually and if we ever do doors doors 2 is is not making when did doors 2 release again let me just double check this doors 2 is probably never going to make money that's depressing Okay, maybe the update will save it a little bit. But anyway, my point being that we do have six things getting automatically made. So my updates team will always work on that. But we also have, say, five or six things that we manually make. So we just need a bigger updates team. So I think what I'll do is absolutely go ahead and try to make this space into something a bit more interesting. So let's do a little bit of building to get started. And let's see if we can't maybe uh, recreate this shape you know, right here. So two across at an angle, four at an angle. So we want to go two. Oh, that needs to be a room. So two across at an angle, one, two, three, four, and at an angle and back like that. And I think that is, oh, it's not the same space at all. Okay. That's absolutely my bad. This needs to go like that. And then we merge those two spaces. And we basically do the same thing upstairs as well. So down here, two across at an angle, one, two, three, four, angle, angle, and across. And that is just going to be a stairwell. That is essentially all that space is going to be. So we want to do stairs right there. And the door for this is going to go right about there and right about there. And that gives us access to the stairs so people can get out in case of emergency and it should keep the place pretty good. Let's also go ahead and select furniture in here and just duplicate it uh, other than the stairs, I guess, up to uh, up to here. So let's get rid of you and get rid of wait, do I do I do I have too many staircases? No, I think we're I think we're good now. OK, so, yeah, we got the lights in there. We got the stairs in there. We could probably bring the styles across as well if we really wanted to. So. Let's just uh, very, very quickly 
go ahead and do that as well okay so we have all of this space to play with right here and i think what we're gonna do is divide this all up into two big old development spaces so what we want to do is use a wall right there and a wall right about there and what i'm thinking we could also do is a bit of an angle right there if we really wanted to which i kind of really want to so i will chop out these two rooms like so and i'll go ahead and do a little something something like this which didn't really work the way i thought it would never mind you know what let's just do it the uh slightly lazier way which is by doing a little something something like this so i'm gonna merge all of these spaces together and that does give us sort of you know bigger angles than or you know bigger angled walls than we've been using before but i think this is okay uh this being at the end is fine as well i think what we could probably do is go ahead and put a nice door sort of in the middle of that and the middle there and we can have some access to these spaces down towards the end of the corridor as well so you've kind of got two ways into what's essentially going to be two large development spaces and the other thing i can do here is i can actually go ahead and merge oh wait no i can't merge those together because that will make this part of the building orange as well Ooh, okay okay that does slightly complicate things um all right what if we were to Ooh, how am i gonna do this because i do want to merge these spaces this big sort of uh chunk right here is completely unnecessary unless i mean i i could just do this turn it into a pillar and then merge those spaces i suppose which gives us this weird little corridor thing here which i don't absolutely love but what if i was to say split you know that bit it's no longer going to be a section of pillar and if we merge those oh hold on a second there's a different way i need to do that if i do this and then merge those two sections we still have the orange wall we still have room for a leader's office if it's you know a little bit smaller than the one downstairs but i think that's okay i think that absolutely works it keeps the orange and it gives us a really nice big development space so let me just really quickly do that and merge those so that leader space is almost the same size as the one downstairs and there we go i think this is a pretty good looking space it does everything that i would want it to do and it's certainly going to be good for an updates team now admittedly well, actually, I say update team. I might put my game dev team in here just because these are properly huge spaces. Honestly, too big for game dev teams. So, well, actually, how many more games do we have to make? Let's take a quick look here because we are doing, let's see, game and we're doing an RPG, which is Dream World. We're doing an adventure game, which is Mississippi John. We're doing simulation, which is Horse Simulator. And we're doing a sp an fps game which is captain motor stab okay so we need to do sports and we need to do real-time strategy so i guess that's what we could use this space for is a set of sports games and real-time strategy games and then up here could potentially be a giant absolutely giant i guess updates team might be a bit weird it really might be a bit weird to do that, but I think that's kind of what we're going to do. So let's very quickly get ourselves a giant space for an updates team. And I guess we'll give them a meeting room as well, since that's kind of what some of this space over here can be. This is a really weird looking floor of the building, but I'm kind of doing this intentionally so that every floor has a unique layout. So what I'm thinking for this one is you come up the elevators, you have this lobby space like you do on the other floors as well you have space through here into a corridor we can put like vending machines here this can be an office for probably the updates team leader or both update team leaders we've got some bathrooms back here which unfortunately have some big windows there's well there is a lot i could do about that but i'm not going to because it would ruin the symmetry of the building this back here is going to be some kind of meeting room and that leaves us this giant space in the middle and what i'm thinking for this is a nice big glass door right there and some kind of glass door over here as well and essentially that's just going to be a giant dev space it might get split into several rooms just so it's not you know ridiculous but 
I don't I don't know that I I don't know that I mind the idea of this giant dev space. Cause I think what I would be inclined to do if I do split it up is something like that. So this is kind of its own room. And I mean the update team I think does need artists on it, so we could potentially let's see if I brought this down something like uh, let's see down to there across and something like that it gives us a very sharp corner there which I don't love so bring you down to something like that that's still to the same corner something like that perhaps again very sharp corner which I don't well love uh let's see if I was to do this and this does that look any better not not really is is the answer I'm getting from this it's the the vibe that I'm picking up but honestly, I'm kind of going to allow it because it's just going to look weird and I'm kind of at the point of embracing the weird with this game. So let's let's just have some fun and see what this ends up looking like by the time it's done. I also really like these sort of open doorway things. It's kind of cool. I know they're the archways is the word I'm looking for, but they're not being treated like doorways here. They're just sort of room dividers, I guess. And just like that, all of the color is in there. All of the doors are in. None of the lights are in. None of the furniture's in. And I'm not going to go too crazy with doing all of that today because I don't want to spend another episode just tediously building something because, you know, there's other stuff to be done around here. What I am going to do is, at the very least, get these other game dev teams up and going. So let's get ourselves space for a leader right there. And I'm actually going to have to go in and take out all of the accessories here. So we'll duplicate this now. And basically, we're going to see how many of each we can fit in. So design, art, and programming. So I guess we probably want a relatively even number. But we can go one, two, three designers right there. We can go one and two. And I'm not going to do the music teacher thing again. But we'll go one and two right there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then over here, we can probably do a little something like one, um, two right there. We could get another one at the end, but I'm not going to do that. We could go for here and we could go for there as well. Or right here wouldn't be a terrible spot. Uh, but I think what I'll do is I'm just going to grab these guys and shuffle them to be right in the middle of the windows. And that gives us room for 10 designers, which honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm pretty good with 10 designers. We actually look like we're going to have more space for artists here, which is not actually the best news in the world, but we'll see what we can get away with. Uh, maybe what we do here is an artist right there and an artist right there. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this and see what we can do with this space in the corner. So right about there is pretty good. We'll put this guy against that wall. So that gives us four. And then I want to leave a bit of this space kind of open. So that's four, that's five and six, and then seven, eight, and perfectly nine, ten. So that gives us a good number of artists. And then for programmers, we'll go one, two. We'll sort of do similar here. So three, uh, four, and five, six. I know this is a little bit more cramped in the doorway, but that's okay. That's six programmers. Duplicate this guy for, I want to say that space. So I think that's what, eight of them now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then a couple by the windows will give us uh, nine and ten. And that gives us a pretty open space. If I need more of any of these guys, I can go ahead and do that. We can rearrange these offices and that'll be okay. But for now, it'll be 30 employees uh, per game dev team. So let's do the same thing on this side with, uh, wait, yeah, 30, 10 in, uh, in each space, right? Let me just double check. It is 10 in there and it is 10 in there. Yeah, 30 people per game dev team. Oh, that's, that's, that's kind of a problem. Employees won't actually use these toilets. So I guess we get rid of the windows and I guess I am going to have to use privacy windows on these, which I don't necessarily love because it does sort of mess up the aesthetic of the building a little bit, but I'm, I'm thinking I can maybe get away with it if we do something a bit like that. So all of the back of this building has privacy glass, except that bit. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, this is just not going to be a bathroom then. Uh, oh, wait, no. Okay, that's going to slightly complicate things. Hmm. Okay. 
what if I merge those and then I go to walls and I say do that and then I go ahead and sort of merge those spaces just to get the style back and then I do this and I, I guess this could be something or rather maybe we do that kind of thing and that kind of thing so it's like a little I, I don't know what this would necessarily be at the end of the corridor but Whatever it is, it exists. I don't love it, but it exists. And that's all that can really be said about it. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, hold on a minute. Didn't you say that your updates team is overwhelmed or your updates teams are overwhelmed and that, well, you know, we need more of them to keep up with all the software? I did say that. And you might be following that up with, well, why are you adding more game dev teams? Because isn't that going to give your updates teams more stuff to update and the answer is yes it absolutely will do that but the reason i'm doing this is because essentially i want to go ahead and i want to make the rest of the games that's that's that is honestly essentially it now we can do one two three four hold on one two three four five six we're already automating two we're doing two more yeah so we do have two more to do Wait a minute. Do we? I only have... Th Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait. Wait a minute. Uh, Captain Murder Stab. Who is developing this? Games 1 is developing Captain Murder Stab. Horse Simulator 11 is also Games 1. Interesting. So both of those are being developed by my main game dev team. Wow, that is... That is not what I was expecting. That is not what I was... That's not what I was expecting at all. So this space up here... Wow, okay. I never realized I'd done that. And those are still good, right? Like, they, they, they release and they're... It was outstanding and... Outstanding. So they're doing a pretty good job churning out Horse Simulator and Captain Motorstab from one team. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. I'm not going to change that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm not going to fix it. What I will do is copy this and do games for day. And then we'll go to here and we'll we'll copy this one and it'll be games uh, for night. And we'll do exactly that same thing as well. We'll go and copy you and it's going to be games uh, five day. And uh, it'll be the same with Games 5 Night as well. So copy you and it's Games 5 uh, Night. Essentially, they're going to be set up the same way as the other ones. The numbers might be slightly different, but it's going to be 10 of each uh, discipline, as it were, across the board. So uh, for you, it's HR management. It's just 10 and 10 and 10. Might be unnecessary, but that's okay. Specializations are... Uh, yeah, that's actually okay. They're not doing hardware. So that's, that's all right. Okay. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. Now, I have seen a couple of comments that have said that maybe giving a medium salary or even a low salary would be a better bet than bringing in people with a high salary. Because what it does is it gives you people who you are paying less, obviously. Uh, they are less skilled, but then they're with you for longer. I don't hate that idea. And I think it's it's an interesting one because what I can do is I can say educate, you know, 10 people. So education amount is the maximum amount of employees that can take courses at once. So essentially, if I set this to minus one, all of my employees can, you know, go on education at the same time. I'm gonna... I'm gonna take this chance with games five. So games four is gonna be set up normally. 10, 10 across the board, 10 education, that's okay. Uh, so if we go into here as well, we can say, you know, 10 education, 10 there, 10 there, and 10 there, and nothing else changes. With games five, we'll do, you know, the 10s across the board, but I will bring the salary down to low. Now, this does mean that my, uh, essentially my, my product, my end product is potentially going to be worse. In fact, no, if, oh, if I do this, we have a problem. Whatever I give to these guys, because the chances are their skills are only going to be one or maybe two star, we can't give them something to do that is going to require 
you know, a three-star programmer or something like that. So that is not ideal. So we are going to go with high, which means we're going to get maybe 14, 15 years out of every employee at most. But I think it's going to mean that we can turn, you know, we, we can churn out better products quicker is, is how I'm looking at it. So we'll see what happens. Also, people have already started claiming these spaces. That's, that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and get these rooms here set as uh, games four for those two spaces and we will allow pass through and we'll go ahead and set these spaces here as games five and we'll do exactly the same things here as well so games five with pass through and then these two little spaces are of course going to be for our team leaders right there and what we can do is go and say that this and this are going to be meeting rooms they're not set up for it yet but that is what they're going to be and uh, these up here are going to be bathrooms, which I've put toilets in and no sinks. And there we go. All of these teams now have a leader. It might take a little while to find people to go ahead and work in uh, these teams, but they do at the very least have a leader. So we should see some people coming in tomorrow, which is going to be lovely. Let's accept all of these and close. And let's also go ahead and see if we can't maybe train up some of my leaders as well. So if I go to manage employees and we sort by leader, we do have someone like Tina Cook who is, you know, we can go and say educate and socialization. So Tina can now hold meetings. We have Marcel Simmons who, if we educate, uh, can now do automation and multitasking, who can also do all of this as well. I'm really only interested in educating my leaders, though, to be completely honest. But we'll do a little something something here just because. Uh, Cole, for example, can now hold meetings. Uh, you, for example, can now hold meetings. And that is something we can kind of do across the board here because not a lot of my leaders can actually hold meetings or automate. And now we're getting it to a point where they can do, you know, all of the above. That leader, Annette Patterson, for example, wasn't able to do... HR management for some reason. That's kind of terrifying. And there we go. We are sorted with a bunch of the leaders being educated. We've also just finished the print job for Captain Murder Stab 8, which is coming out in June 2025. So about seven months from now, which is totally, totally fine. I'm also aware of the fact that it is about to be the end of November 2024, which I'm almost certain means that we are about to see the four founders leave, which is which is upsetting. I'm, I'm really not happy about this. I'm really, really not. But we did so much at this company in the last 44 years. It's it's difficult to be, you know, it's difficult to be completely upset about it because we have done a lot. We have achieved a lot here. Uh, we also have our new game dev team coming in right here, which is lovely. So we should see. The other teams, yeah, games for night is starting to fill up. The other ones will as well. So let's immediately go in and start giving them, wait a minute, are these rooms set to be able to be passed through by any chance? Because I can't help but notice that the artist one is uh, is not looking too good. Switch team, it is passed through enabled. It doesn't look like we have anyone just, wait, what are you doing? Who are, who are you? Games today. You're just, you're, you're chilling. All right, well, that's a bit bit weird that y'all y'all just kind of sitting around chilling but all right we'll leave you to it uh i'll tell you what we'll do let's immediately go in and start working on another game so we're going to do game we are already doing an rpg in this we're going to do a sports game and we'll say you know uh you know what let's let's actually start reasonable here and try and get this thing going sooner than later so we'll give it a customizable character it doesn't need a branching story or dialogue trees. It can have physics. It's not going to be an open world. It's going to have post-processing and HUD. It is going to have adaptive music, I guess. It's going to have recorded dialogue. And we'll do 3D shadows, facial, not VR. Cutscenes, sure. And multiplayer. So it's pretty good. It's going to take about two years. That's not every single feature it could possibly have. It's going to be $69. And it's an original IP, of course, unless we want to go buy one, which I don't really want to do. We'll host it as per usual. We'll source control it as per usual. And uh, we'll go sport core because I'm lazy. And uh, in terms of a name, I mean, skate go in space, air tricks, ultra foot tricks, racing simulator, light base simulator. Good Lord. Okay. I I need 
Hmm, I don't know what kind of game this would be. I'll be honest, I, I, I'm not really big into sports games. Occasionally I buy like FIFA every now and then and I kind of dig it. I do like Skate and apparently Skate 4 is going to be a thing soon. Basketball. <laughs> I like that we can just call it basketball. Okay, this works right here. We are going to be using some other companies' software for the sort of framework of this thing with the 2D and the 3D and the audio and all that, but that's okay. It has 100% expected interest, 140% wasted, 9.7 million consumers, approximately three years. It's, it's going to take a while to do this, but Games 4 has been set up to do it, so let's start developing Ultimate Bass Fishing which is right there. That is exactly what we're calling it. And I'm calling that, uh, I'm calling it that simply, oh, inbox one update, please. I'm calling it that because Ultimate Bass Fishing was actually a game on the Nintendo DS. I think it might've been 3DS. And I thought that was hilarious. I just think Ultimate Bass Fishing is, is hilarious. So we're making Ultimate Bass Fishing. It's a sports game. And now we're going to go in and we're going to start working on our final game which is going to be real-time strategy and we're gonna you know new framework of course which is uh, rts core it is not gonna have customizable characters it will have dialogue trees i guess a branching story meh we'll give it all this stuff uh mod support yes physics sure adaptive music recorded dialogue digital exclusive shadows and facial animations we'll do some cutscenes, no procedural generation and we'll do multiplayer as well so, we're going to make it uh, $69, of course. It is going to be Nerdsoft hosting, source controlled as per usual. And now we just need a name, which is Soldier... F oh, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be It's going to be the Sergeant... It's going to be a spin-off of Captain Murderstab, much like Halo Wars was a spin-off of Halo. We are going to do Sergeant Stabby Face as... No! It's not Sergeant Stabby Face. It's Commander Stabby Face. This is the this is the sequel to like so everything that happened in the expansions for Captain Murder Stab has been leading to this moment. You now play as Commander Stabby Face, leading an army in this real time strategy game. That's what we're doing. That's how it's gonna be. All right. So tech levels for this thing. We're gonna use Frame Pro. I know I could use my own stuff. I'm not gonna. I'm just going to use uh, other people's stuff for now. So this is, ad, you know, as advanced as it can possibly be. It is going to be on every single operating system that has more than 100,000 people using it. So that is computers, phones, and consoles. 9.7 million consumers. Approximately five years to make this is uh, not ideal, but we'll we'll live. And uh, we'll give this to uh, to Games 5 right there. And uh, we'll give it to uh, to Games 5 here as well. They are going to struggle because technically there is no one currently in those teams, but that'll be all right. And interestingly, the, uh, oh boy, the leaders in those teams are not good at games. Okay, well, we'll develop it anyway. And it'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. So Ultimate Bass Fishing and Commander Stabby Face are go. We're going to make both of them. It's going to be amazing. I should probably start detailing these new offices as well because there's nothing in there to, you know, give any bonuses or... Well, there's nothing in there to make the offices all that appealing either. I've also lost my Nerdsoft sign on this side of the building because I had to uh, divide this wall. So let me... Oh, I got rid of it on this side as well, apparently. Oh. All right. Well, that's... Uh, that's fair enough. There's now no markings on this building whatsoever to say that it's Nerdsoft. That's... Fine, I suppose. I guess I could do something back here, like get rid of those, maybe, and put a little a little sign up there. Can I do that? Company logo. Can I get it in the middle? No. No, I can't. All right, well, put the windows back, I guess. All right. You know, I feel like I should prioritize some updates down here. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Doors was never updated, apparently. Doors 2 should probably be the priority, though, even though no one's ever bought it. So let's get that going. And then Defender, whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be honest. It's not it's not crazy important to me at this point that Doors gets updated because we have put the sequel out. But maybe the fact that the original never got updated is why the sequel has been kind of terrible. That is, that is, there is a distinct possibility there that that is why the sequel was received so badly. 
and I, I would believe that. The good news is, it is, you know, we're done updating the sequel, so let's go and update uh, Defender come out recently, so let's try and update Defender as quickly as we can. We'll get through that, even if we don't fix all the bugs, we can at least upgrade the tech and keep people happy with that. Hopefully the Doors 2 update, because I think, I think that Doors 2 update was actually, yeah, it brought it up to relatively modern tech levels, so now it should sort of be kind of competitive, I guess. Oh my god, whoa, 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 Rosie Robinson just retired. Rosie Robinson was a founder, no? 45 years, yeah. Rosie was a founder, one of our founders just stepped away. What has that done for our stocks, though? Wait, the ro- Oh, do you just continue to own it? Wow. Okay, so Rosie Robinson is gone. If we go and look at our employees, it's now me, Graham, and Beverly. And that makes me think that we're about to see me, Graham, and Beverly retire. Yeah, there it is. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Okay, and there goes Graham as well. So Captain Murderstab just lost its uh, its lead designer, and I'm pretty sure we were also some team leaders. Yeah, I was in audio. Graham was 2D. Wow. Oh, that's uh, that's kind of sad, honestly. It's it's a little bit sad. Uh, we'll give Lakeisha Wells Captain Murderstab, and I guess audio 2D and uh, audio sorry day and 2D day now need new team leaders. So let's go lead programmer, I guess. Automation is going to be important. And we're going to be looking at, uh, what are we looking for? Audio uh, day. So begin looking. We'll go for Carmen Delgado. And for, what was the other one? 2D day. Okay. So we're looking for uh, 2D day. We'll begin looking and we'll go for Ty Stokes. Man, that's... That's kind of nuts. That is, uh, that is, that is kind of nuts is what that is. Um, let's sort by employees, years with company, Carmen Delgado. Congratulations. You are now the team leader. And that was for audio. The other one was 2D day. So employees, Ty Stokes, congratulations. Uh, we're not educating you. We're making you the, uh, the team leader. Oh, wait, no, I missed. Uh, change roles, leader. Congratulations. There you go. Wow. That's that's wild. I actually kind of want to see what happens now when it ticks over to 2025. Are we going to see the estates try and take that money? Are they going to sell the stocks? Like, what what actually happens here? Are we about to lose $1.5 billion because the estates take it back? We do? Oh, it's lagging. Oh, okay. No, we're good. Okay. Oh, that's not so bad then. <laughs> that's... Why don't we just drop $15 million, though? Oh, because we dropped, like, $11 million in sales. Well, that'll do it, I guess. Oh, man. Oh, we also did benefits, right? Yeah, we did an extra $6 million in benefits for Christmas. Wow. That is, um... That's kind of nuts. That is, uh... That is kind of nuts. So there's... All the founders have left the company. That is, uh... I feel weird. I feel, I do, I do genuinely feel a little bit weird about that now that they're all gone. Uh, it is, it is kind of a strange feeling that we, I don't, I don't remember the last time I got to this point with Software Inc. where, you know, the founding characters are like gone. Well, I guess I've got to a point before where like some of the originals, but I, I don't remember the last time that like my character retired. Oh, hey, Doors 2 started making money. Lovely. It, it took long enough, but there you go. It's uh, it's got unavoidable marketing. It's maybe one day going to make a bit of a profit. That'd be nice. I'm not, you know, expecting a miracle here, but uh, oh my God, the next one's next March. <laughs> oh, sorry, not next March. The next one's in two years. I hope it's good. That's all I'm going to say. I hope it's good. I hope it's not terrible. Uh, let's see. What are we updating in the minute? So we're still working on updating Amplitude Studio 2, which has so many bugs in it. And uh, Doors, the original, is still getting a bit of an update as well. Fortunately, this Amplitude Studio thing's coming along. I think the biggest problem we're having is just the simple fact that my, uh, my port jobs seem to take forever. 
I think that really is where we're kind of struggling the most at the minute as uh, as a company. But I, it's like I've said, right? The updates team, we we need to make it a bit bigger. We we really really do. Although I just I I mean updating yeah updating does updating doesn't have design involved now that I think about it. So I've made these giant spaces up here. We have you know a design space. We don't actually need a design space. We also don't need a huge art space either. So we could potentially change this up a little bit. And we could just make one giant, uh, I guess, programming space and a bit of a smaller art space down here. And that might be enough, to be completely honest. That might be all we need. So I could essentially go in here and say that maybe we have a wall that goes right there this is going to be our art space this is going to be our programmers and i mean that's huge that is absolutely massive but what we could do in theory is i mean go and take these out go and merge those together so it's kind of one space take that out of there because we don't really want it and that would give us space for something right here i don't really know what i'm gonna be honest i'm not 100 percent sure but something i i yeah something <laughs> i'm really good at this uh you know commentary thing aren't i we'll, we'll build something okay i know i said i'd keep building to a minimum but i am gonna do just a little teensy bit more here just to get things sorted with this uh art space and everything else we got going on so what I think we'll do is we've, you know, obviously got a little bit of corridor here, but I'm going to split this off ever so slightly. And this can be our, our sort of space for artists. This can be for programmers. And I think what I'm also going to do, to be completely honest, is I'm going to expand this space just a little bit. So we're going to cut right there. We'll do this and that gives us a little bit less space in here which is probably for the best uh, and what i'd like to do as well is i would like to cut across there so let's just see if we can do that if i go ahead and merge uh those spaces i can go ahead and do this right here we'll merge those together and now we have sort of these angled corner pieces this is still going to be a meeting room right here but this can be set up a little differently down here so we'll do a regular door, we'll do a regular door, and we'll do a regular door there. In fact, let's just merge those, because it's going to look a little bit better. And honestly, we probably, you know, should do some corner stuff here as well. So if I was to go like this, and like this, we can then angle this bit, merge those together, and it's, it's a bit of a point, but uh, it looks alright. I don't... I don't hate it. So we'll do this as well. We can merge these spaces together. We can give ourselves a bit of an angle there as well, merging those back. And that looks okay. I don't I don't totally hate how that looks. Get ourselves a nice door here. And that gives us space again for artists and uh, programmers. So what I need to do is I need to grab the color of the interior of this room and set it to be the interior of that room right there and then we need to go and just put all the stuff we're going to need for furniture so this room is not going to be warm enough yet so we'll get that sorted it is not uh, going to be cool either so that's now sorted i think this one's probably good so now we just need a bunch of well a bunch of desks so let's pop downstairs let's go ahead and duplicate this guy slap it there we'll take that off of there and we'll uh, go ahead and move it around a little bit so let's see what we can do with a whole bunch of programmers there we go we have ourselves updates two day and night we have team leaders in there we have their arrival and departure hours all set and i've got them set up with these offices up here which i've even gone in and set as updates to artists which I haven't done down here. So I actually need to go to these two spaces and say limit usage to artists. I need to go to these two spaces and limit usage to programmers. And I need to go to these two spaces and limit usage to designers just to make sure those are set up correctly, which these ones are down here already. So we should see 
the updates team coming in in the not too distant future these new updates teams and they should hopefully do some good things for us i'm not sure if we'll see them come in this morning which it's looking like we'll not be seeing because i'm assuming there's not too many people in those teams oh no this one actually does have a good number of people in here which is lovely so what we can do is immediately go in there and i'm gonna assign these guys to i well no i don't want to add things actually do i want to add things here what is it horse simulator 8 yeah you know looking at it we probably do want to add uh horse sim 8 to a bunch of other things same with horse sim 9 to be uh to be completely honest with you we'll add it to uh to this one and uh vector studio 5 we'll add it to uh to nothing and horse sim 10 we'll add it to this guy as well there's there's a lot to be done but what i want to do is make sure that my updates teams are working on these these ports that's kind of the the big deal for me i'm not as worried about the actual updates as much as i'm worried about the the ports so we'll get those done as quickly as possible hopefully adding a whole truckload of people to uh to these jobs will help a little bit and it's also kind of cool that dream world is about to go into alpha so we got some things happening. Nerdsoft is making waves. We also have uh, Captain Motor Stab 8 coming out in a couple of months, which is kind of exciting. We actually have, uh, so we have that coming out this year. Next year, we have Vector Studio 6. Then in 2027, we have Vertex Studio 4, Doors 3, and Horse Simulator 11. 2028 has nothing right now. And then Amplitude Studio 3 in 2029. So not bad. We're doing good. We're making waves there we go we have the updates guys coming in they're working hard they're gonna help us get these uh these ports done we should have a team leader over here somewhere <laughs> there we go all right lovely that should make all these port jobs that little bit quicker let's actually go ahead and prioritize i guess vector studio 5 first so that we can start getting some of these you know out of here and uh hopefully you know make things just that little bit more efficient we'll focus in vector then we'll probably do i guess horse sim horse sim 10 would probably be the priority since it's the most recent release so we'll see what happens we should however have another group coming in here or at least a few of them i don't think we have oh we do have a full team there okay so we should have there we go at least a few guys on the uh the night shift coming in that's okay all right that works for me. I mean, they're not going to be... The artists aren't going to be doing much on porting jobs right now, which actually... Well, it looks like art isn't really the... Art isn't really the thing that we're updating most of the time. And also looking at this, that Amplitude Studio update, I'm just going to push it out because it's... It's as good as done. It really is. It was, you know, 1,800 bugs fixed. That's that's not... That is not bad at all. And then the Doors update will get there. Doors 2, has it made a profit yet? It, uh, it hasn't, and it doesn't look like it ever will. Wow. That's miserable. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is a miserable way of being. All right. I'm not thrilled about that. Inbox 1, still making good money. Horse Sim 10 made more than Inbox 1, which is disappointing. Uh, we never did an expansion for Horse Sim 10, and I, I think we updated it. I'm pretty sure we updated it. Have we got... Oh, yeah, there is an update going on down there for Horse Simulator 10. Okay. All right, well, I guess that's uh, <laughs> that's us in a pretty good spot right now, I think. We're, we're doing okay. We still have more stuff coming out. Updates should be a bit quicker. You know, these, these port jobs should be a bit quicker. This Vector Studio one is actually going pretty quickly now, which is great to see. I'm almost wondering if we should put everybody on this Doors one, given just how many... Oh, my God. I forgot about Captain Murder Stab. I got really distracted. Is it good? It is outstanding. I love it. That makes me so happy. That really makes me so happy. So let's see. The next one, uh, they're not even doing anything with it right now. They are marketing Captain Motor Stab 8. Support is probably in there somewhere. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's start printing this guy. Let's make sure there's 250,000 copies in stock at any one time. And let's hope that we have a bunch of money coming in. In fact, let's go one further and let's uh, port Captain Motor Stab 8 to all of these operating systems. There are so many with so many users. And also update it. Let's, uh, 
let's throw an update at this and see if we can't bring it up to modern tech standards as well. So audio tool for this, honestly, I'm not super stressed about using other people's stuff right now. We'll bring all of our stuff up to date eventually. This one's actually outstanding. Released in 2020 with, oh, that's me. Oh, I updated. Look at me. Look at me knowing what I'm doing. All right. Lovely. That's, uh, <laughs> got slightly confused there. Uh, so what are we doing with this? So we're doing 2D, we're doing networking, we're doing systems, uh, updates needs to be in there. We're doing, uh, 3D as well, and we're doing audio. So we'll throw all those teams at it. We will source control it, we'll update it, and, uh, I imagine we can do that quite quickly. I would, I would have to imagine we can get that update done in, yeah, no time at all. It's, it's going pretty quick. So that's good. We'll see if that uh, we'll see if that that continues. We'll see if we can actually get the update out in a good amount of time, and see if it ends up making a whole bunch of money or not. I hope it does. I'd be slightly annoyed if it didn't. I'm also thinking, let's get this doors update done. I'm not worried about the bugs. I just want the update to be finished. That is that is my my sole priority on that one. We'll see if they can manage to pull it off because I have got a lot of things that are like priority ten right now with these guys. So we'll see. Anyway, let's take a quick look. Captain Murder Stab 8 last month did 1.3 million, so not actually as much as we're used to on the Captain Murder Stab franchise. I don't know that I'm thrilled about that. Okay, it is finally time to update Horse Simulator 10, which means this Doors update is actually ready to go. It's not going to have a lot of bug fixes. It's going to be about a fifth of them, but that'll do as well. And we have all of our teams working on ports now, which is something at the very least. Let's focus on the Captain Motor Stab port. Let's focus on the Horse Sim 10 port. And uh, the others can come a little bit later. I'm expecting it to still sort of take forever for those port jobs to actually be done. But at the very least, if we go and have a look here and we sort by latest releases, Captain Motor Stab 8 starting to make money. Uh, Inbox 1, making money. Horse Sim 10, making money. Doors 2, eh. <laughs> I'm at the point I might even sell that IP. I'll be completely honest with you. If we traded it, no one even wants it. All right. Well, that's disappointing. Uh, if we look at last month's revenue, though, we have, you know, we have this down here. 3.7, Defender, still making good money. 1.4. Captain Motor Stab 7. Doors, the original, actually just made more money than uh, than Doors 2. So that's a little bit embarrassing, but uh, it's all right. It's okay. We're still making money. We still, you know, 16 million last month. Not bad. Not bad at all. And uh, good old Mississippi John is about to go into alpha as well. And phone 4. About to be done with its alpha phase, even if the, you know, hardware team is kind of slowing it down a lot. Not bad. I'm actually really pleased with uh, where we've got to with Nerdrosoft here. Even if Doors 2 is an embarrassment. So I guess that's going to do us for today. I know I mentioned in the last episode that this might be the last episode of Software Inc. Beta 1. Well, it isn't going to be the last episode. Not of Software Inc. Beta 1 and not of Nerdresoft either. But with that said, the next episode is going to be the final Nerdresoft episode. And then after that, I have a couple of ideas for a couple of one-off build videos in this game. I've got some ideas for buildings I think would look really cool, but that don't really match the Nerdresoft vibe. And then I want to start another series on Software Inc. Beta 1. Because I've seen a couple of comments that have said that I absolutely should do that, but I've also seen comments that say I should play modded Software Inc. and that I should probably try hard mode because it seems that I got to a lot of money here relatively quickly. So basically, that's the plan. Modded Software Inc. Beta 1 with mod... well, with mods. Modded Software Inc. with mods. Yes. Yes. Good job. Uh, on hard mode, and we'll see what we can do. If you have any suggestions for mods for that series, which is going to be in a couple of weeks, by the way, and there is one more episode of this series before we get to that, uh, leave them in the comments below. I think I've got, like, an automatic thing that won't allow you to post links, but just, like, name the mod and be like, oh, it does this, and it's kind of cool, and you can find it on Steam, and I'll probably check it out. But for now, 
Well, all that's left to do is say thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye